please welcome 850 KOA talk show host, Mandy Connell. In the past few years, I've had the opportunity to get to know a woman named Heidi Ganahl. Come on! I first met her at a meeting for women about business, and I found out she was the founder of Camp Bow Wow, a franchise operation that takes care of all of our pets and our dogs, that she built to a $150 million company. But, you know, Heidi could have gone about a leisurely life at that point, but she saw that there were a lot of problems that needed to be addressed in Colorado. She started an organization called Moms Fight Back. She figured she could harness the power of women to help kids and families address the issues that are happening right here in Colorado. She's founded other nonprofits. She's worked on school safety committees. She's done all of these things as a private citizen because she recognized that we are not headed in the right direction here. We're headed in the wrong direction for our families and for our children. And Heidi didn't sit back. She jumped in and started trying to fix it. She's the only statewide Repu elected Republican right now as a CU Regent where she's been working really hard, really, really hard to protect free speech and ideological diversity on CU's campuses. She's the reason that we have speakers on CU Boulder's campus that don't get shouted down. You know, a lot of the issues that we're facing here in Colorado have been only been made worse by our current governor. He's made housing more expensive and his design for our citizenry includes getting us out of our cars and into buses and trains where we'll probably get stabbed because crime is also out of control. So Heidi decided to step up. She has been traveling the state, doing a podcast, talking to people in Colorado about what their issues are, how they feel about things, and what they think is really, really important. She's been talking to the people of Colorado while our governor has been riding in his suburban between Boulder and the Capitol when he makes it in. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you what I hope, with your support, will be the next governor of Colorado. Please welcome Heidi Ganahl to the stage. Crime rates are skyrocketing. Murder rates are up now 50% in the Denver area. Our kids are suffering. Children's Hospital declared a mental health emergency for the first time ever. Forget New York. Last fall, Colorado had the highest nursing home death rate in the nation. So what is Jared Polis going to do about these things? I wish I knew. He thinks it's more important to lecture us about eating meat. We need a change. That's why I'm running for governor of Colorado. As a mom, a wife, an entrepreneur, I live the American dream right here in this great state. As governor, I'll do whatever it takes to protect that. I'm Heidi Ganahl, and I approve this message. Please welcome Colorado gubernatorial candidate, Heidi Ganahl. <laughs> Love me some Shania Twain. Yes, let's go girls. I am so honored and blessed to be here today. I love the Western Conservative Summit. It's one of my favorite events. And honestly guys, it is a critical time in our history right now. It is a critical time for all of us to step up and fill these rooms to fight back against the loss of our freedoms. And I want to ask you, who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this? A time when our kids are in crisis. We have one of the highest suicide rates in the country right here in Colorado. We have the second highest drug, rate, drug addiction rates for kids in the country right here in Colorado. And 60% of our children are not reading, writing, or doing math at grade level in Colorado. It's a time when schools are teaching nonsense and separating parents, keeping us out of the conversation with our kids and their education. It's a time when our capital city is filthy and filled with needles and crime and small businesses being shuttered. It's a time when families cannot afford to fill up their gas tank or their refrigerator with groceries or afford their heating bills. And it's a time when Colorado's rural areas are being decimated by Jared Polis and the Democrats, which will not happen on my watch as governor. We are all here today to honor God and family and our founding principles of this great country and our great state. And we will fight together at such a time as this. Are you with me? 
And I am so honored to have a voice to be able to speak for the people of Colorado, the farmers, the ranchers, the parents, the students, everyone who is suffering right now, and we are suffering. Jared Polis has been an out-of-touch failure for our state, and we've got to stop him. And don't let anybody tell you that we cannot win. I won a few years ago statewide against Alice Madden, one of the most formidable Democrats out there. She was one of the crafters of the blueprint with Jared Polis, and I will beat him just like I beat her just a few years ago. And if Jared Polis and the liberal media doesn't think I'm a fighter, they have not seen anything yet. I have faced battle after battle in my life, and I've been surrounded with great people and my family who've helped me get through it. But the most important thing that's gotten me through it is my faith. My faith has carried me through. <laughs> Thank you. The tragedies that have we woven through my life, whether it was the crash that killed my husband when I was 27, or the market crash of 2008 that almost destroyed Camp Bow Wow, or brain surgery just under two years ago. My faith got me through all of those things and led me to this point, to be a voice for all of you to have the most important battle I've ever faced, and that is the battle for our country and our state, for our kids and our grandkids, and for the future of our democracy. I need your help to do it. As you've heard me say, I'm a mama on a mission. I have four kids, Jack and Jenna, who are 10. I think they might be here. My 12-year-old, Holly. My 26-year-old, Tori. I do everything for them. I love them with all my heart and soul. And my husband, Jason, who loves the barbecue, who loves GQ barbecue in here. <laughs> But we've both been so blessed to live the American dream, and we will do anything it takes to protect that for our kids, for our grandkids, for your kids, for all kids. It is time. It is go time. It is such a time as this for all of us to stand up and fight for the things that we hold so dear. Thank you. As your governor, the most important thing I can do is undo as much of the damage as possible. As your governor, I will trust you to make good decisions for your life, your business, your family, your health. I will trust you. And the only thing I will ever mandate is freedom. I promise you that right now. And I will protect free speech. You heard Mandy talk about what we've done at CU. I will be a warrior for the Second Amendment as my dad was a cop and I'm a proud gun owner. I will protect the Second Amendment. I will protect the unborn and do everything I can to undo the terrible legislation that Jared Polis and the Democrats just passed. And I will be a fiscal hawk, as I was when I led No on Prop CC to protect Tabor. Tabor is one of the most important things we can keep intact to protect our economy and for our future in Colorado. So guys, on day one, what will I do? I will undo as much as I can, whether it's rolling back executive orders, hundreds of them. I will replace all the boards and commissions I, pro I possibly can, over 300 of them. That's how Jared Polis does his dirty work, so we've got to change that. I will take us to 0% income tax, cut the gas tax in half. And here's my favorite. I'm going to reduce bureaucracy by 10% a year in my first term. That's 40%. We're going to roll back government overreach. I'm going to give power back to parents and go all in on school choice. You guys like school choice, right? Yeah. And I'm going to put our energy workers back to work. I am so proud and honored to be a voice for all of you. I'm Heidi Ganahl. I want to be your next governor. Join me. Let's build a movement together and take out Jared Polis in just a few months. God bless Colorado. God bless you. And God bless America. Thank you. Please welcome back George Brockler. <laughs> Thanks, Heidi. Nobody ever yells that for me, uh, <laughs> even at home. And that hurts. Aww, that George. really hurts. Uh, Heidi, I want to start, as I've started with all the candidates so far, Colorado Christian University has some 
pretty big strategic principles. You touched on some of them here, but I want to ask you specifically about them. When you talk about the sanctity of life, traditional family values, free markets, limited government, original intent of the Constitution, as governor, I don't want to hear that you're just going to support them. What we want to hear is that you will help advance them. Is that true? Uh, that's my heart, my soul. I've built my, my life around these principles, and it's go time. It's all at stake right now, right now. It is go time, and Colorado's got to step up. We've never had a better opportunity to talk about our principles and how important they are to our children and our grandchildren, whether it's starting a business that you love or um, protecting the ability to have free speech or the Second Amendment to go be energy independent, which is so important now. And we have an opportunity to talk to our young people about that with what's happening in Ukraine. So I think we were created for a time as this. It is go time, and we've got to teach our young people about the principles that are so near and dear to our heart and get them reconnected to their faith, reconnect communities, get people off their phones talking again, enjoying each other, having fun just like this, and sharing our ideas for the future of Colorado and America. It, uh, it sounds like from your speech, you may not think Colorado is on the right track. <laughs> oh, Lordy, where do we start? You know, I'm most worried about our kids. Uh, I mean, if, if our kids aren't all right, nothing else matters. And with what's happening with the suicide rate, mental health crisis, uh, drug addiction, second in the country in drug addiction for our kids right here. That's pathetic. And I know Jared likes to tout how much we have in pot sales, um, but we should not have shut down schools and kept pop shops open and kept our kids isolated and out of sports. <laughs> and ignored parents. Us parents knew this whole time what was going on and how bad it was. So kids have to be our first priority and getting them learning again, the basics, blocking and tackling, reading, writing, math, science, civics. And that's what I've worked really hard at at CU, too, getting back to basics. You uh, live in Douglas County, where I live. I do. And we have seen, going back 20-plus years, Columbine. We had a shooting at Arapahoe High School. We had STEM. We've had a bunch of others outside of schools. But when you talk about the kids, as governor, what can you do to help stem the tide of that school violence, those mass shootings? Well, George, you, you know very well that this is a deep, deep issue that goes back to faith and family and community and reconnecting with people and curing our mental health crisis. Um, it, people are in despair right now, especially our kids. So we've got to address that. But we also have to create standards of care so that schools know what's expected of them and then measure against those standards of care so that parents can hold the schools accountable and hold me accountable as governor to track and make sure that the resources are being spent the right way and that we're actually moving the needle to keep our kids safer. So that's my business brain going, hey, we've got to figure out how to set the bar, hold the schools accountable to being at that bar, and if they're not, give them gap training and resources to fix it and make sure that our kids are safe, just like we do with banks and concerts and you know all the different ways that um, we're protected when we go to the Capitol. So we've got to do step it up big time for our kids. Do you have a political hero? <laughs> Ah, uh, you know, I went to the ACE scholarship luncheon uh, two weeks ago and Condoleezza Rice spoke. Oh my goodness. It was um, so inspiring. She's just so courageous, fearless actually, so articulate. She understands the principles that we care about so much. She's such a leader in our party and has been such a, a sense of calm about her. And I think she is just an amazing person and sets a good example. I want to ask you about your family. And I, the one thing I've noticed from all the candidates that are up here, they all have a uniquely American story. And I think everyone knows you were born a billionaire and <laughs> you inherited a bunch of money from your mom. And you, wait, no, I'm sorry, I was thinking of someone else. Um, to, <laughs> tell, us a, tell us about your family. Uh, my family's the best. Uh, my mom and dad got married very young. They might be out there. Um, hi, mom and dad at like 18 and 20, but 
um, they worked their tails off to give us every opportunity along the way. And we didn't have a lot of money or resources, but we had a lot of love and support and they inspired me to go out and make it big and always give back. Like we're a family about giving of service of ourselves. And so um, Jason and I are trying to instill the same thing in our kids, whether it's the nonprofits that I've built or um, running for office and teaching them about our principles of our country. But um, I just love our country. Um, I love our state so much and I was raised to um, pay it forward. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. You talk, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> you talked about the businesses you started. Tell us a little bit more about the leadership skills you think that are unique to you that you're gonna bring to this office. I think if there's one, one um, word that sums up what kind of leader I am, it's grit. I've had to have a lot of grit throughout my life, yeah, and be tenacious. And um, you tell me I can't do something, I'm usually going to get it done. And that's how I feel right now with Jared Polis. It's like, bring it on, Jared. You beat your little arrogant self and act like nothing's happening right now and you're Mr. Moderate. But that's not the truth. We all know it's not the truth. And with all of your help and support, we can build a movement and we can win this thing. It's winnable. But I've got to have your help. Yeah. Listen, I asked Greg a sports question. I feel obligated to ask you one, too. And you said winnable with Russell Wilson under center. How far do we go this season? Woo! Let's go Broncos. I think we're going to do really well. <laughs> That's fantastic. Heidi, thank you so much. This was Thanks, great. George. Heidi Ganahl, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Great to see you. Great job. Really good job.